Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to discuss about the ethics in engineering research. So usually when you are talking about uh, ethics in uh, engineering, it's about normal ethics. So as we know, already ethics is nothing but something which should be right, right? So ethical issues means something if something is going wrong then obviously that is the wrong thing. For example in terms of research how it can be defined. The thing is imagine I have published some work. Okay. The X person will take that particular work and he publishes one more work. Then there is whether the ethics breach is happened or not whether it is ethics. No. And imagine some of my students are working in my laboratory and uh, I get the, all the data information as I am a guide. So I publish my work without their concern. So is this ethics? No. And one more example. If I do a lot of research and that, this, everything, I form an idea, I form, do uh, the review of literature, and I find a problem statement, and finally I publish some particular work. Okay, that is fine. 100% ethical because I don't have to answer anybody else. <coughs> the, the same example, if I have done the work and I am doing the work and uh, somebody has got access to my laptop or maybe my data, okay. So maybe some, my, some of my colleagues or someone else or one of my friends, if they have taken my data and if they publish before I publish, then is this ethics? No. So these kind of things will come into picture in engineering ethics in engineering research. So it's always it's uh, whether it is acceptable or not acceptable, or whether it is wrong or whether it is doing it right. So it's all about ethics is all about this only, right? Similarly, it goes for the engineering research also. So ethics generally refers to a set of rules distinguishing acceptable and unacceptable conduct. That means they have got it has got some laws, it has got some rules. So we have to follow that. Okay, if you are not following, this is that is unacceptable, right? We are having acceptable conduct and, uh, conduct and unacceptable conduct. So distinguishing or right from wrong or wise aphorisms like uh, the sayings of Chanaka, you might have heard in nowadays uh, most of the stories, you know, people will be keeping right the, what is right what is wrong that has to be clearly defined and the, the same thing is defined in even in engineering research also that's what we call it as ethics <coughs> so most people learn such norms in their formative years so it's not like that uh, the first time you start research and you know everything no as as you keep on get the learning experience when you get to keep on getting the exposure you learn these particular things, but moral development continues through development, different stages of the growth. So that has to be there. Obviously, ethics will start once, once uh, the, as you keep on growing. Definitely, when you keep on exposed to the, all these things, then you will have that particular, you know, uh, at different stages of the growth. Even the moral development also will be involved, not only the ethical. So, although everyone recognizes some common ethical norms but there is difference in interpretation and applications obviously there is a difference between interpretation and application because why because we know that every supervisors know these ethics every guides knows okay every uh, senior knows in the department or maybe some of the scientists they know at they do breach these laws they do not follow this particular ethical guidelines the ethical guidance has to be followed right so what you are knowing is an interpretation right and what you are doing that is your application so there is a huge difference between the interpretation and the applications the whatever the rules or the laws or the ethical issues you know that has to be followed it should not be that you, you know it but you are not following it right so you have to know it and you should follow it so ethical principles can be used for evaluation proposition or interpretation of laws so when you are talking about ethical issues obviously ethics is not law but laws has to follow i mean all the ethical guidelines has to follow the law right so every law law is made to follow the ethic, ethical guidelines for example since it is not ethics so that that is what you are going to do so that's what. So although ethics are not all not laws, but laws often 
follow ethics because ethics are our shared values. So in order to protect ethical issues, we have laws. So international norms of ethical conduct of research have been there since adoption or adoption of uh, Nuremberg Code in 1947. So what is this international code of conduct? So here, for example, international norms of it for the uh, ethical code of conduct or the ethical conduct. The reason is that when we are having the ethical issues in our particular organization, okay, the organization is responsible to take care of those particular things. Now imagine we are, we are doing the research which is having the application globally. So when these kind of research, every research nowadays has got you know, global applications. Right now, the, every research has been done, whatever you are doing now in, a, in, the, in sitting in the Indian lab, same research might be someone will be doing in Japan or US or UK, right? So these kind of uh, you know things has to be regularized. For example, imagine if I sub, if I get the findings now and if I uh, and if I start publishing it, okay? Obviously, I will be having more ethical hold on that particular research, even though the same research has been done by the different countries. Because that particular research, specific research will not be accepted once my research has been done, or I mean published. Because the one you publish internationally, uh, that's why we are having international journals and all, publications and all. Once you publish it, definitely the same work cannot be published. There has to be some modification, there has to be some innovation, there has to be some, you know, some, some, kind, some sort of uh, change, then only that particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, paper will be or the research will be accepted. Why? Because if it is published as it is, like in both the papers, in here in India and from here, there in UK or America or somewhere, then obviously whoever submitted first or published first will have, we, he can go, I mean, he can uh, you know, file a case against the people who have done because he can say that I, this is my work, I have done it, I have published it. Maybe after this they might have to copy it and they have done. So here the genuinity will not come into picture. The first person who is publishing it will come to be a picture, right? So that's why we are having the international norms which are set in 1947 by Nuremberg Code. That adoption has been done. So according to the WIPEC, so is one of the uh, scientists, okay, or the research group, uh, this thing. So he, the issues related, he, he states that the issues related to the research credit dates dates back to the establishment of a BRS. What is BRS? British Royal Society. So in the 17th century only. So this particular all the ethical related or these things, it goes to the whole credit goes to the BRS to refine. They are the one who started to refine the methods and practice of, of modern sciences. What they have done is that, so imagine I, 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 I do work here, I, they do work here, here and all. For example, we have a conflict between Tesla and uh, uh, who is that? Uh, Edison, right? So similarly, there are a lot of uh, you know, contributions will be there from the original person, but the other person will publish it. So maybe he might have you know, stolen from it or maybe some fraudulent might have happened. Later, that is his problem. Right? You, you have to deal with it. But when it comes to the scientific community, the first person who is going to publish, he will get the first credit. And later, if the other person is coming and claiming that this was my work and I've already done it, no, you cannot have any control over it. So this event altered the timing and as well as the credit issues on the release of research results since the British Royal Society gave a priority to whoever first submitted findings for the publication rather than trying to find out who had first discovered. So it's not that who discovered it first, it's about who published it first, okay, or who submitted the research work first. Definitely, obviously, there is a fair, uh, this thing, even though in some cases it will not be so this thing, but every scientist, every research scholar are aware of these rules. So once they find it, they discover something new, they have, well, the next step is they have to publish it. So white back, he raised two simple but significant questions to address the tricky issues of the authorship. There are two tricky issues of the authorships. The first thing is who should be included as an author. The second thing is the appropriate order of listing authors. So these are the very, very tricky issues. Why? Because imagine the first thing is who should be included as an author. For example, not every single, just because he is my friend, I cannot add him as an author. He has to have some contribution towards that particular research. 
imagine I, I, I find idea, I do formulate, okay, and some of the two other uh, friends of mine work in my work, uh, group, and I publish uh, when I when I write a paper, I cannot include the authors who are my friends, just friends because they have not worked. I have to include the authors as those who have as a group who worked for who contributed for to, towards their research even though somewhat sometimes some are good at write, you know paper writing i mean uh, drafting uh, grammar checking uh, plagiarism reduce, reduction and all even for them also you can give a credit because that is also a contribution right so who should be included as an author is always a tricky issue right and the appropriate order of the listing of the author for example imagine when i do a lot of things i will be considering myself as first author the second author is the problem who has after me who has contributed more towards this particular work that has to be critically evaluated and then it has to be taken care then the third person then the fourth person finally the corresponding author who is the senior author or your guide or your supervisor in, 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 the, in case of your engineering projects or in case of master project your guide again as a corresponding author as in your phd definitely it will be your supervisor or a guide phd guide will be your corresponding author so these are some tricky issues that has to be addressed while during the authorship in research so this is also here also ethics is very important we cannot simply say that this have person have gave idea and has not yet contributed anything else just because that he cannot put him as a first author right so he has to have a contribution in the in the throughout process it starts from the idea formulation it goes with the review of literature then finding the research gap identification of the problem problem statement and solving the problem and getting to know how to solve the problem and start doing the research in the laboratory and writing the paper all these things has to be there he has to involve in that if every field if some person is involved he will be the first author so an increasingly interconnected world what happens the issues of co-authorship is very relevant to all researchers definitely every time this will be an issue co-authorship so there are i just know i told you know because of that so there are issues around uh, uh, the individuals who may be deeply involved during the conduct of the research work but may not contribute in the drafting phase so this kind of issue just now i discussed so government bodies universities worldwide have adopted certain codes of research ethics so every ha every government bodies every uh, universities has got certain codes that means this has to be followed like this so research ethics and the resp responsible conduct of research are often continuously or you can say they are erroneously used interchangeably so that means we need to have the research with ethics followed okay so in the chapter in next chapter that means the second module we are going to see the specific challenges which are posed by the applications of ethics in engineering research the next topic is ethics in engineering research practice that we will discuss in the next class